I just want to give you a heads up. We're going to start the program in about five minutes or so, give you a chance to get back to your tables. Thanks.
Good evening again. May I have your attention again, please? Hope you enjoyed dinner. Everything okay so far? So before we start the program, I want to just thank everybody who worked so hard on tonight's ceremony. Um, we take our Wash U Arts and Sciences events very seriously, and they don't just magically happen as if out of a chemistry lab. The Dean's Office and the Advancement Team work hard to create opportunities for the Arts and Sciences community to gather and learn about the incredible things taking place here and to celebrate together. So thanks to all of you who did such a great job. Would you please help me in thanking those people and congratulating them for doing such a great job. It's now my great honor to introduce Dean Feng Sheng Hu, the Richard G. Engelsman Dean of Arts and Sciences, and the Lucille P. Markey Distinguished Professor. Feng Sheng is now in his fourth year leading Arts and Sciences. He came to us from the University of Illinois, where he was a distinguished scientist, professor, and ultimately Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. He arrived at WashU in July 2020. I'll just pause to let that sink in. As you may remember, uh, or not, that, not your normal summer, Dr. Walensky probably remembers that, what was going on in July of 2020. Dean Hu's first job was to help figure out our response to COVID, then safely and successfully guide our students, faculty, and staff through the health crisis. In the middle of that, he energized, he organized, and he inspired an inclusive and rigorous and ambitious strategic planning process. And then he launched the new vision for what a school of arts and sciences, what Wash U Arts and Sciences could be. In the process, he's been able to dramatically increase funding for research, not only hire over 55 new faculty of the highest caliber over just the last two years, but retain our own great faculty. He successfully spearheaded a number of construction projects that will greatly enhance the learning and research capacity of arts and sciences. One new building will, will dramatically enhance the landscape of the Danforth campus. And you may know how much we love construction projects at Washington University. You may have heard the joke that the real mascot at WashU is the building crane. I'm sorry, they, you know, they told me not to say that and I did it anyway. You'll hear more about these successes in a moment. Uh, a biologist by training, uh, Dean Hu is widely recognized, highly respected for his innovative interdisciplinary research in the area of climate change. There's a lot more, but I think you get the idea. Bottom line, we're very fortunate to have Dean Hu leading arts and sciences, the largest school on the Danforth campus. Please, please welcome Dean Feng Sheng Hu. Thank you, Tom, for such a kind introduction and good evening. It is an honor to be here with you tonight as we celebrate the 2024 recipients of the Arts and Sciences Distinguished Alumni Awards and the Dean's Medal. I would like to take a moment to welcome our award recipients and their special guests, the members of the Arts and Sciences National Council, our alumni and friends, and those of you joining the celebration via live stream. I'm grateful for our dedicated faculty and staff who have worked for months to make this evening a reality. Thank you for taking part in this wonderful tradition. Tonight, we are gathered to recognize the accomplishments of our outstanding alumni, community leaders, and donors. As you will soon see, our honorees all have made a difference around the world, and their extraordinary accomplishments are contributing to WashU's reputation as a premier institution for learning, innovation, and public service. During their time at WashU, our recipients studied molecular biology, chemistry, African and African-American studies, 
and comparative literature, a microcosm of a vast array of disciplines comprising our school. While our Dean's Medal recipient did not personally attend Washu, he shares the same intellectual curiosity, entrepreneurial spirit, and commitment to innovation that defines an arts and sciences graduate. And thanks to the spirited collaboration taking place in our academic community and the extraordinary generosity demonstrated by our alumni and donors, many of whom are in the audience tonight, we have experienced tremendous progress in implementing the 2021 Arts and Sciences Strategic Plan, a transformative decade convergence, creativity, community. And now allow me to share a few highlights of our accomplishments. In 2023, we set a new school record for research funding through external competitive grants. When our scholars brought in $56 million to support their groundbreaking work. We launched an unprecedented recruitment campaign. As, man, as Tom just mentioned, we added 55 new faculty members to our community. This includes some of the most outstanding scholars in the world, and they're in some key areas, such as the new Department of Statistics and Data Science, which will be WashU's hub of data science education and scholarship. We have continued to significantly enhance our graduate education thanks to awards from the National Science Foundation and new fellowships to attract the very best students to come to WashU. And I am delighted to report that graduate applications to arts and sciences have gone up by 72% in the past four years. Thank you. As part of the incubator for transdisciplinary futures, a signature initiative in the Arts and Sciences Strategic Plan, we fostered unprecedented collaboration and synergy between all seven WashU schools with 143 investigators working on grant proposals. And our transdisciplinary events last fall, just last fall alone, drew nearly 3,000 participants. This is just one of the many examples showing how arts and sciences is leading WashU to transform the intellectual landscape of the entire institution. And looking ahead to August, another strategic plan initiative will host the first ever St. Louis Data Fest. The event is designed to unite professionals across diverse sectors who want to use data to drive positive societal change. The event will be a major step in putting WashU on the map as a leader in data science. Among the numerous, numerous projects and initiatives on the horizon, to me, none is more exciting than the new arts and sciences building the construction of which will begin in early October this year. This project brings together stakeholders from across WashU to create a new home for arts and sciences in the heart of the Danforth campus. The facility, estimated to be more than 100,000 square feet, will foster vital connections within arts and sciences and across the entire campus. The building will house dynamic departments and programs, support our commitment to diversity and inclusion, strengthen student-facing services and resources, and showcase our vibrant intellectual community. And thanks to the support and vision of Chancellor Andrew Martin, and the hard work of university advancement, especially Vice Chancellor Penn Hanson, we do have a lead donor committed to naming the building. Yeah. 
the lead gift will be announced very soon. I'm not going to tell you the details here. And we are looking forward to sharing with you the many additional opportunities to support this milestone project in the history of Washiu. This period of unprecedented growth is transforming arts and sciences into a global model for research, teaching, and public impact. I have been so pleased to see the incredible successes that have come from the shared vision in just less than three years. Of course, none of these achievements would be possible without your belief in our vision and your unwavering support. I can go on and on to break about arts and sciences, but let me turn the, uh, the attention back to the honorees tonight. Our honorees tonight represent the best of the best in arts and sciences. They have combined the strong foundation of a Washu education with their personal and professional experiences to develop a bold vision for the future. As a result, they have made remarkable contributions to their local communities and helped transform the global society. Thank you so much again for joining us tonight as we hear their stories and commemorate their many accomplishments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Feng Sheng. And now it's time to celebrate our awardees. They will be introduced by academic leaders in WashU Arts and Sciences. Then Dean Hu will present their uh, medallions. I am Brittany Packnett Cunningham. I graduated in 2006 uh, with my uh, bachelor's degree in Afro and African American Studies from Arts and Sciences. When I think about the power of Arts and Sciences education, there is a breadth and depth that I'm able to be exposed to. And when I think about my major department in particular with Afro and African American Studies, their multidisciplinary approach was so brilliant because we got the literature, we got the history, we got the arts, but we also got sociology, we also got political analysis, we also got deep cultural understanding that has been essential to the rest of my life. When I think about myself as an activist and as an organizer, as somebody who is using media platforms to help shift justice in the world, being able to clearly and concisely connect those dots between movements and culture and art that helps bring us together in a shared vision, um, that education was essential to every single thing I do now. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have had not only a place that educated me, but that nurtured me deeply. When I left WashU, I went straight into Teach for America like so many of our alums and pursued what at the time for me was the best intersection of my belief in justice and my passion. Stayed in education for 13 years, did education policy work. I led Teach for America St. Louis. And right in the middle of that tenure, August 9th to be exact, when I saw on Instagram that Michael Brown Jr. had been murdered by a Ferguson police officer. And then when I discovered that Michael Brown Jr. had been a student of Teach for Americas um, in Normandy. I had a thought that then became a blog post that then became a widely shared article that as much as I believed in this tool, that education didn't save Mike Brown. He still fell prey to larger, long-standing, previously existing injustices that certainly can be helped and corrected by creating equity in education, but that there had to be a broader approach. Understanding that putting cultural confidence and community consciousness alongside academic rigor would not only help young people know that they can change the world, but give them an understanding of the world as it is and as it should be, and the skills and rigor that they need to go out there and change it. You know, my career trajectory has been what I like to call purpose by design. 
I saw an opportunity to transition my work into media as a learner first, as a student first, um, but ultimately as someone who recognizes the power of content to change minds, to educate, to shift circumstances that people thought were once impossible. I would say to students, no one who ever changed the world fit in. The folks who change the world are the ones who are daring enough, confident enough, bold enough, crazy enough to try something different. Because I believe that when we ask better questions, we become better answers. That is my life's work. And I think if we all made that our life's work, we'd be getting to justice a lot faster. I have to give a special shout out to the leaders of the Urban Scholars Program. When I was there, Mrs. Elliott, Dean Glor, Laura Stevenson, Dean McLeod, you want to talk about extra care right when we needed it in all the ways we didn't know we needed it. I am indebted to them in ways I can't even describe. I'm so humbled to receive this award because I recognize the greats <laughs> that have come through Washington University, who have come through arts and sciences, but this is certainly um, a welcome and received affirmation that putting one foot in front of the other has led me to do some things of impact, which was always the goal. Wow. Purpose by design. I'm so proud of you, Brittany. My name is Shanti Parikh, good evening. Dean Hu, thank you for hosting this. Thank you for the advancement team for putting this on. I'm Shanti Parikh, I'm a professor of, I don't know why I'm reading my title. I should know that. I'm, I'm a professor of anthropology and I'm the chair and a professor of African and African American studies. And I am extremely excited to uh, introduce Brittany Packnett who graduated in 2006 as the 2024 recipient of the Early Career Advancement Award. Before I say that, I wanna say that Brittany was one of my first students when I started at WashU 23 years ago. So it was my second year here. There were only three African-American women faculty in arts and sciences, and only a handful of black students in arts and sciences. So we knew each other, and we knew each other well. And even at that time, the word you used here, purpose by design, is how she led her life as an undergrad. She was the co-founder of the Student Worker Alliance. So even as an undergrad, she was an activist, she was an Irving scholar, and she was fundamental in the Ferguson uprising. But I did not realize I knew her mom and her stepfather even so I knew all of them. So I'm so proud of you, and you are such a great representative of Washington University. So congratulations. This award is for your work as an activist and an organizer for the ways in which you've leveraged media platforms to shift justice in the world, for the work you've done to place community consciousness alongside academic rigor, to give pe young people the skills and understanding in the word they need to challenge the world, and how you do it all so ethically and brilliantly. And I love seeing you on MSNBC Saturday and Sunday mornings. So we love you. Congratulations. Thank you so much, good evening. Um, I'm sorry, I'm the daughter of two Baptist preachers, so we believe in call and response. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you know, it was nearly 10 years ago in 2014 when I stood in the parking lot of this same hotel um, at about 5 a.m. in the morning, speaking to George Stephanopoulos, getting ready to go live on Good Morning America. It was the morning after Officer Darren Wilson had not been indicted for the murder of Michael Brown. And so nearly 10 years after that cold November morning, I am recognized that while the streets outside here are calm, that is not true across the entire world. I am thinking of our family and our siblings from the Sudan to Tigray, from Palestine to Ferguson, our Jewish family, our Sikh family, our queer and disabled siblings, 
I'm thinking of humanity in this moment and recognize this incredible milestone as a reminder, an ever-present reminder, of our collective responsibility to ensure that we are all free. Because if we are not all free, then none of us are free. I want to thank Chancellor Martin in his absence. I want to thank Dean Hu. I want to thank the entire faculty uh, and team of Washington University and certainly the School of Arts and Sciences. Thank you so much to Emily from the advancement team for taking such good care of me today. Um, and thank you certainly to the workers, the staff, the wait staff, the bartenders, the videographers, and everyone who has done so much work in the background to make tonight special. I am very honored to be an heir to the legacy of this institution, of this city as I am a native, and of her people who have set the path that I am rooted in toward further freedom. I'm thankful to my family and friends who thought it not robbery to spend this evening with me. Thank you so much. From each of you, I learned joy. I'm thankful to my late father, the Reverend Ronald B. Packnett, who was a professor of black liberation theology and black church history at WashU. Um, and as I sat in the back of his classroom all those days, it is from him from whom I learned courage. Um, I want to thank my mother who crossed a graduation stage at the George Warren Brown School of Social Work before I graduated from Washington University myself for teaching me compassion. I want to thank my brother who darkened my door room uh, door <laughs> many a nights trying to uh, have some fun on a college campus. And from you, I am grateful to have learned tenacity. I'm thankful to my husband who I met out in those streets of protest from whom I learned creativity. I'm thankful to fellow WashU alum and our ancestor filmmaker Henry Hampton, whose eyes on the prize archives not only served as the contour of my senior thesis, but continue to serve um, as a light of creative subversion. I want to thank Dean McLeod and Dorothy Elliott and Adrian Glor and the entire Irvin family for teaching me community. I want to thank the workers of Washington University, the organizers, the students, for teaching me bravery and will remind each of us that campus workers are all a part of our family and oh, and are deserving of the dignity um, and respect that all members of our family are due. I want to thank our professors, some, my professors, some of whom are here tonight, Dr. Parikh, uh, Professor Himes, and so many others who taught me to have confidence in my voice. I'm going to thank my mentors, some of them who graduated from this school, like you, Coach Harris, for teaching me discipline. And most importantly, I want to thank my son, that precarious two-year-old who you might have heard from this evening, <laughs> from whom and for whom I am reminded that this milestone is actually not about me, but it is always and forever about my responsibility to do my part to help ensure that all of us get free. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Lynn Tatlock, the Hortense and Tobias Lewin Distinguished Professor in the Humanities and Professor of Germanic Languages and Literatures. I'm also the Director of Comparative Literature. It is my very great pleasure to introduce you to Lisa Sharkey, Arts and Sciences graduate of the class of 1980, first WashU graduate in Comparative Arts, and a 2024 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award Please join me in watching a short video. I lived in a small town in Westchester County, New York, and I was 15 years old when I decided that I should not do 12th grade of high school. When I was accepted to Washington University at the age of just 16, I flew out for the spring weekend for accepted students. It's warm and there's frisbees flying and there's dogs in the quad and I think I could be really happy here. The school took a wayward, scared, out of control 16 year old kid and gave me purpose and gave me motivation and changed the trajectory of my entire life. I did what your typical student would do in the Baskin Robbins ice cream store. I sampled everything. 
I was studying modern dance. I was studying Spanish. I studied French. I studied philosophy, history, literature. So I went to them and said, could I work out a new major called comparative arts? And um, they actually let me do it. And I became the first ever comparative arts major at Washington University. Fast forward 30 years, my son Doug, my second son to attend WashU. They called me and he said, you're not going to believe it. I finally picked my major. It's called comparative arts. I was like, what are you kidding, Doug? That's my major. I started that major. My favorite professor was Professor Joseph Schreibman. His love of Spanish definitely caused me to have a lifelong love of Spanish. There was a dance teacher named Greg Mayer. She really inspired me to think out of the box. When I got to Washington University, it was all about the professors and I didn't ever want to let them down. And I was learning how to create presentations that needed to be assessed at a much higher level than anything I'd ever done before. And to this day, that is exactly what I do. First in my TV news career and now as a book publishing professional, I have to make sure that what I'm doing, that the work that I'm doing is as high quality as it could possibly be, but with as much creativity. I am the director of creative development at HarperCollins. You know, that's a job where I have to be creative every day, not because anyone's forcing me, but because I want to be. And Washington University gave me permission to be the most creative thinker that I could be. Is there a particular value in my life that I gained as a student? I would say to keep your mind open to the universe and to always think deeper and think wider and to stay curious and to never think you're too old or too young to learn something new and exciting all the time. Washington University is my number one charitable giving because it's investing in the future. I'll put my money on Washington University any day. I was not only sending in a donation every year, but also trying to give back to the school. I've hosted students at HarperCollins and taken them behind the scenes of book publishing. And so I've really devoted a lot of time and energy, you know, just to be there. Because if you can't mentor young people, what's the point of growing old? I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? You need to help the next generation be the up and coming future leaders of the world. And so when Marty Riker said, we are thinking of doing a publishing concentration in the English department, I was all in. Really, it's a 360 degree experience from being the youngest kid on campus to now being someone who's mentoring kids on campus. It means everything to me to be honored with this award. It just warms my heart to be the one that's on the receiving end of some sort of a kudos from the place that I love so much means everything to me. Lisa, for your phenomenal success and creativity in television news, and the publishing industry for putting your money on WashU and investing in the next generation of WashU alumni and the future leaders of our world, and for mentoring WashU students and advocating their success. We offer you our deepest thanks, our most heartfelt kudos. We are proud to honor you with the Arts and Sciences Distinguished Alumni Award. Congratulations. Hi, St. Louis. It's my happiest place on earth. Um, I was in Graham Chapel today, and I, it's one of my favorite places on campus. And I was alone with my husband and daughter, and uh, I decided to sing Amazing Grace. I sang the words um, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And I then changed the words to say that wash you saved a wretch like me <laughs> because I really was a very lost and sad young woman when I showed up here at the age of 16. I was so young that for my birthday they all brought me stuffed animals. 
Um, but I matured pretty quickly, and I, as you saw in that video, I tried to do everything that I could. I hadn't ever really been inspired by academics before, and the professor who first noticed me and really helped me along is here tonight, Professor Joseph Schreibman. Um, he has, uh, if he could stand up, I just, I honor you. Um, not only did he teach me Spanish, but he taught me learning, and he then became a surrogate grandfather to each one of my three children, all of whom are graduates of Washington University. He convinced me to study abroad in Spain, and then when I came back from Spain, he allowed me to teach Spanish as a senior to freshmen entering. So um, that was the first time I ever taught at Washington University. That was coupled with my job as a waitress in Holmes Lounge, which used to be a very elegant coffee shop, and my job as a waitress downtown at Laclede's Landing. Um, and I just am so honored and so grateful. And now to be creating a publishing concentration in the English department is so great because so many young people in arts and sciences don't know what they want to do or what they want to be. They just know that they love to learn. But to be able to be in a classroom and to explain to them that the words that they love can become the books that they publish, the books that they edit, the covers that they design, it is really a full circle moment. And I just want to thank all the people here, everyone who's worked so hard, especially in the development department, Steve Rosenblum, Bill Stoll, Russ Austin, Macy Russell, who's been my partner uh, about tonight, and Nick Diefenbach, who has just been a friend and someone that I really cherish our friendship over many years. People have come from near and far, my two beautiful sisters, one from Florida, one from California are here. My sister Tina is a professor at USC at the Dr. Dre and Iovine Academy teaching entrepreneurship. Um, my brother-in-law Tiger and my sister Pamela are building a beautiful healing center on the island of St. Vincent. And I have my, I also mel mentor military veterans and James Castleman and his wife Becca drove all the way from Atlanta. Um, I help military veterans transition into the civilian world. Um, in particular, I want to thank uh, my son Gregory Gleischer. He's here tonight with people from his company, Good Developments Group. He has purchased 100 acres of downtown St. Louis and is turning St. Louis into the construction capital of America. And they are investing time and energy and money and love and turning brownfield space into green opportunity for the city of St. Louis, which deserves to be exactly what WashU says it is in St. Louis and for St. Louis. And to my friends who have come in, um, Janet and Larry and Dan, and just everyone that's in this room tonight, I urge you to celebrate life and realize that without places like this, for me, this, this is my Disney World. When I walk up those steps at Brooking Hall, I get down on my knees and I, I kiss the ground and I say, thank you. Thank you, Washington University. You saved me. And thank you all so much for this really tremendous honor. Thank you, Dean Hu. I, I'm really appreciative. And I also want to thank anyone who's watching for my family, my dad, who couldn't be here tonight, um, and anyone. I'm, I'm wearing my late mom's earrings. I'm carrying my late grandmother's pocketbook. Um, you know, something old, something new, something green, something red. And my daughter, Casey, had just graduated two years ago. My son, Doug, who's watching from France, my other comparative arts major. Um, I just love you guys all so much and very, very appreciative to everyone, and especially my rock, my husband, Paul Gleischer, who is, I guess, videotaping um, over there at the table. <laughs> so thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Good evening. I am Jen Heemstra, and I'm the Charles Allen Thomas Professor of Chemistry and the Chair of the Department of Chemistry. And it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. John Solenberger, 
who is a 1969 Arts and Sciences alum, a Wash U Chemistry PhD, and a 2024 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award. Please join me in watching this short video. Washington University at the time had one of the finer nuclear chemistry departments in America. My goal was to get a doctorate in nuclear chemistry and go to Los Alamos and work in the nuclear area. I changed my research based on my work as a teaching assistant in the laboratories at Washington University for freshman chemistry. And so my emphasis as a result of that changed from nuclear chemistry to more classical solution chemistry. And as a result, when I graduated, instead of going to Los Alamos, I went east to the central laboratories of DuPont in Wilmington, Delaware. The goal was to have a researcher go work with big corporations to help them make the transition into high-performance plastic. What motivated me, I think, was a desire to make the world a better place to live. And I always said to myself, I wanted to do that without hurting people. After I went into plastics, some of the problems I solved were based on what I learned in the freshman chemistry laboratories. I solved the problem that made anti-skid braking systems possible for cars. And it was based on some experiments that I worked with the freshman chemistry students that are in their laboratory. I was involved with Illinois Tool Works on the development of the first plastic buckles for luggage and everything else. And that was 46 years ago that I was there when we made the first buckle. I also personally developed the first small microwave oven in the world. And that technology was a real breakthrough for making life better for almost everybody. What I developed at Washington University was a spirit of don't quit. And so perseverance was one of the big things you learned. The second thing was you had to be flexible because my research turned out that had I just stayed in the way that I started, I never would have scored. My favorite professor obviously was, was Professor Wall for whom I worked. Working for Wall forced me to be very precise and very, uh, very organized in the way I approach things. And that too served me very well in my career. To me, Washington University is one of the great universities of the world. It's sort of a critical mass of great ideas and a lot of enthusiasm. You can't come here and not be imbued with the proper spirit and the inclination to do good in the world. Washington U won't let you be average. Follow your dream, persevere, and don't give up. There were times when it would have been very easy to quit, but that was not the way I chose to live. And perhaps my greatest achievement I, I uh, accomplished in my late 50s. I was still pushing at the end. I would like to thank Professor Wall for accepting me as a graduate student here. It was a great honor to be accepted to this program. To me, it means closing the circle, and I get very emotional about this. I started here, I went out in the world, I changed it, and I'm coming to the end of my life, and I did it. John, please join me. I think I speak on behalf of all of our department in saying that Professor Wall would be so proud of you, and we certainly are so proud of you as well. It has been an honor to get to know you, to learn about your storied career and all of the impact you've had on society. And I have to say personally just how grateful we are for all of the ways that you have been a champion of Wash U 
and a champion for chemistry and for our Department of Chemistry. And so this award is for your teaching and mentorship of WashU first year chemistry students and the discoveries that you made with them, for your work in high performance plastics to make our world a better, safer place, for your perseverance, openness, I love this, the don't quit spirit that led you from one groundbreaking discovery and career milestone to the next. We honor you for the ways in which you used your WashU education to go out and change the world, truly change the world. Thank you for returning here to close the circle and accept the 2024 Arts and Sciences Distinguished Alumni Award. First of all, I want to say thank you and how grateful I am to Dr. Hamster's chemistry department for shaping me both as a researcher and as a person who really wanted to make a difference in the world and make it a better place to be. That said, tomorrow, when you turn on your microwave oven, <laughs> you have to stand up and say, Thank you, Dr. Heemstra, for your team, okay? And when you next fasten the, the buckles on your suitcases, you're going to say, thank you, chemistry department of Washington U. And lastly, if you ever engage your anti-skid braking systems and it saves your butt, you're gonna stand there when you get out of your wrecked car and you're gonna say, Dr. Heemster's chemistry department is the best damn department in arts and sciences. Thank you very much. Well, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to thank uh, Dean Hu for giving me this wonderful opportunity to make this introduction, and thanks to the advancement team for putting on this uh, great event. Uh, my name is Ram Dixit. I am a professor and chair of the biology department, and it is my great pleasure and distinct honor to introduce you to Dr. Rochelle Walensky. She is a graduate of the class of 1991 uh, initiated the bio biochemistry and molecular biology track, as I learned today. Uh, these are the students who I currently advise and have been since joining WashU as an assistant professor many years ago. And uh, she is, I'm honored to say, the 2024 recipient of the Arts and Sciences uh, Distingu Distinguished Alumni Award. So once again, please join me in watching this short video. Even in high school, I knew I wanted to be a physician. And at the time, WashU had this incredible program, the Scholars Program in Medicine, that was an undergraduate bachelor's degree and then an admission to the medical school as well. I applied to the Scholars Program in Medicine um, because for these combined degree programs, WashU was exceptional both at the undergrad level and at the medical school level. Landing in St. Louis, fresh off the plane from Washington, D.C., where I grew up, I vividly remember the admissions director at the time, Jan Snow, who met me at the airport. She clearly memorized everybody's picture and their name, and she said, hi, Rochelle, how was your flight from Washington? And I thought, this place is personal, and I will never forget that. It was among the most inspiring things that brought me to the university. I was a tour guide and I was on the student admissions committee, the SAC, and I loved to show off the place. It was so much fun to stand at the arches, look out on Forest Park, and to brag about the place that you got to call home. 
Because I was in the scholars program in medicine, I had actually the confidence to take some really hard courses that I might not have otherwise taken. But interestingly enough, it's what I would actually encourage all college students to do. This is the time that you have to explore, to reach out, to extend beyond your comfort level. I had this great opportunity to do research at the medical school with a genetics professor named Paul Levine. He did work in the marine biology labs in Boston. So I spent the summers with him in Woods Hole and he picked up the lab, packed the lab, and I served as his tech in his summer lab. Taking advantage of those opportunities was really foundational for me. What was really wonderful about being in arts and sciences is, for me, the deep expertise and knowledge in biology and chemistry, but then also all of the liberal arts things that I got um, to benefit from as well. I took women in society courses, I took philosophy courses. You know, we're arguing about Rene Descartes just after a thermodynamics class. WashU allowed me the opportunity to think big. And I have taken that lesson with me from WashU to so many other things, to the research questions that I ask, to the opportunities that I seek or that I don't seek, and maybe even my last position as CDC director. It was not a job I even applied to or aspired to, but when somebody knocks on your door and says, maybe that's a job you want to consider, think big. So much of what we do in medicine, in public health, in publication is sprinkled with rejection. Not getting your paper in, not getting your grant funded. So much so that when I was a faculty member at Mass General, I used to keep two CVs, one of all of my successes and one of all my failures. Over time, the successes got long, but the failures was often longer than the successes. I think it's really important to recognize that all of those successes don't happen if the failures don't happen in parallel. It is those that make you grow, that make you stronger, and that have you coming back to do more great things. I have always felt that it is really important to give back to the places that moved you. Washington University is among the first places where that was the case. It was foundational and transformational for me. It is easy to pay it forward. Ultimately, I worked hard to make choices which I thought were right for public health and not everybody liked those and were very public about it. For me to understand that some of the places that, that inspired me most, that I look to as my North Stars, would be the ones that sort of recognized the work that we did for the right reasons, um, that just means the world to me. She does think differently, and she thinks big. Um, there's a lot I could say, but I will keep it short, I promise. Um, Rochelle, for your exemplary early scholarship and, and promotion and passion for policies to provide global access you know, during uh, the HIV uh, crisis in terms of prevention, screening, uh, and treatment. Uh, thank you for your historic contributions to public health, which you continue to do, and for leading our nation through the COVID pandemic. Thank you personally for that. <laughs> yes. For thinking big, continuing to think big, and in both the opportunities you seek and the ones you did not, as we heard you know, with the CDC directorship, and, and thinking beyond disciplinary boundaries. This is something I heard you be very passionate about this afternoon, and I think it's a really important point that we need to have blend disciplines to be able to address the world's urgent problems. So thank you so much, and please accept our gr deepest gratitude as this, the 2024 Arts and Sciences Distinguished Alumni Award. Wow, thank you very much. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Chancellor Martin, uh, Dean Hu. I um, was completely um, 
unexpecting his call when he called me to tell me that I would be so humbly honored with this award tonight. Um, so I do want to just say thank you. This place, um, you've heard it from all of the recipients, this place is magical. Um, and I just want to say it is the place I learned to critically think. It is the place I learned about biology and about chemistry and entropy. I use the word entropy in the video. It is the place that taught me lack of order or predictability, which is how my last three years were defined. <laughs> Um, it is the place I should have taken government and didn't, um, but I should have. And it really is the place that bolstered both my IQ, but importantly also my EQ. And I do say that because the friends have been long lasting. I, I want to say um, thank you to Dr. Avi Amin and uh, Dr. Husna Haq, who um, unbeknownst to me, Avi and I were, were classmates together in the scholars program in medicine, and unbeknownst to me, um, created a scholarship in my name so that somebody who otherwise wouldn't be able to experience the magic of WashU can. And so that is the, the magic of what happens in this place, not just in the walls of the classroom, but on the fields um, of the place. And so that has really, truly been extraordinary. Um, I do want to thank, just for a quick second, the 25,000 people at the CDC who work every day selflessly to protect the health, safety, and security of the people in this country so that the rest of us don't have to. Thank you. Um, and then I, I just want to close by um, thanking my husband, Lauren, and my three boys, Seth, Matthew, and Joshua, um, whose unfailing love and support throughout my career, but especially these last three years when I wasn't home very much, could not have done the work, the job, um, with, with the love and support that I had when, when the, the negativity was pretty loud. Um, so I just want to say thank you for, for, to all of you for this extraordinary honor. Thank you. I think we can all agree that we have honored a truly remarkable group of alumni tonight. And now, I have the great honor to present the Dean's Medal to Richard G. Engelsman. Please join me in watching the video and learning a bit more about Dick. I was born and raised in St. Louis. I went to Yale University for four years. I was in the service for six months, a reserve program. And uh, after getting out of that, I went to work uh, for my first job with a very large insurance company in their mortgage lending department. Very entry level job. Didn't pay much, but uh, it was a great learning experience. And then I joined, I guess it was the family business in 1969, or 67. There were two owners and they got the squabbling and uh, we ended up selling out to them. My brother was thir 33 and I was 30 and we decided to start over in the same industry. My brother and I were really first generation in this new business because we had to start from zero. The name of our business is Belt Service Corporation and we are in the conveyor belting business. I can remember the first order, even now. <laughs> it was a telephone call out of Dallas, Texas. And we just built it one step at a time. We didn't know whether we would make it or not. But in the end, it was uh, you know, the best thing that happened to us. You might say it was the source of my donation to Washington University for the dean chair. My father was a graduate in 1920 of WashU and absolutely loved the experience. He would talk it up in the family all the time. He was very uh, involved with WashU and he really loved it. And I guess that's rubbed off on me. I think the interest in WashU came from a number of uh, contacts that I had with WashU through lifelong learning, Wiedenbaum Center. Each time I went to various uh, discussions, lectures, and so forth. Um, every time I would get a notice of some interesting person coming in, I would sign up and, and go to it, and therefore developed a, a real affinity for WashU. It's a two-way street. I learned and they taught, and that's the way it should be. 
I always am motivated to look around the corner and find the next thing, learn the next thing, be exposed to the next thing, and I just enjoy the learning experience. Curiosity, I guess, is, is the main thing. The campus, you know, has had a huge metamorphosis from small to large, building after building. It really is amazing. And then the enrollment is up, up, up. The school's doing great things to try to open it to lower income students and so forth, which is a great thing. There's just a lot of things about WashU that, that I love. Arts and science is such a big part of the university. And so I'm very happy to be part of underwriting it. It offers so much to me as a retired person and obviously to students and grad students who attend there. I am very honored to be the recipient of the Dean's Medal. I want to thank those who selected me and uh, I'm not sure I deserve it, but uh, I'm eager to receive it and very proud to receive it. And Dick, you absolutely deserve it for the inspiring way in which you and your brother revitalized the family's, family business through inno innovative practices and strategic stewardship for honoring your father, a passionate WashU alumnus with generous contributions and unwavering support to arts and sciences for your impactful involvement and leadership across WashU and for your visionary endowment of the Arts and Sciences Deanship, an honor of which I'm humbly the inaugural recipient. It is my great pleasure to present you with the 2024 Dean's Medal. Very brief. <laughs> I uh, have a large amount of gratitude <clears throat> for a number of things. <clears throat> Pardon my voice. To my parents for educating my brother and I to institute a value system that uh, we went by our whole lives. They taught us uh, morality, right from wrong, um, and uh, I'm particularly grateful to my brother and my business partner, <clears throat> encourager, uh, the half with personality, when everyone like uh, having trouble reading this. Um, anyway, um, my uh, brother and I set various commitments when we started our business. Um, he was the generous, outgoing half of the combination. I was the tight, frugal person watching expenses, uh, holding back versus plunging on to the next challenge. Uh, anyway, we made a great team, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of times we were played the good guy, bad guy role. <clears throat> Many of you know what that is. Unfortunately, uh, Bill died 22 years ago at a much too early age. Um, I have gratitude and appreciation to my immediate family, my uh, late wife, Judy, who helped immeasurably um, in uh, the formation of our company and uh, it was a great mother to our children. Um, 
<clears throat> I have a lot of gratitude to our business associates whom uh, we hired very early in our uh, company's growth and uh, who helped us immeasurably build the company. Um, and uh, particularly to our current workforce who produces every day to please our customers. To my wife, Diane, who has been of immeasurable help in negotiating all of the details of daily life, <clears throat> making up for my cognitive deficiencies, <laughs> who is a wonderful social secretary for a shy guy. Thank you, Diane. Uh, our, um, I am honored to wind this up, you'll be happy to know. <laughs> I am uh, very honored to be the recipient of the Dean's Medal. Um, I extend my deepest appreciation to Dean Hu and to the girls from Washington U, Brigitte, Deborah, and Emily, who planned everything in great and logical detail. So thorough and so clear. I thank my friends and family for coming tonight, and I wish everybody a great year. Thanks. Thank you, Dick, and congratulations to you and to our uh, other award recipients. How about another round of applause for all of our recipients? <laughs> this has been a remarkable evening full of inspirational stories, at times a bit harrowing. Uh, our honorees have had a profound impact on WashU Arts and Sciences, and as have the members of the Arts and Sciences Elliott Society. So thanks to all of you uh, here and out there uh, who've contributed in some way to what Arts and Sciences is today, the heart and soul of Washington University. And before I go, I've been asked to make a very important announcement. You no doubt have noticed the lovely centerpiece on your table. Please feel free to accept that as a, a small gift uh, from us to you. However, you may also have noticed that there are at least seven or more other people at your table. <laughs> and there's one centerpiece. You can do the math, especially if you have a math degree from Washington University. So consider this an exercise in civil persuasive discourse. You're on your own. Teacher's out of the room. Feel free to chat among yourselves. Determine a friendly, fair way to determine who gets what. If all else fails, you can arm wrestle, you can do whatever it takes. What could possibly go wrong? So thank you once again for coming. I hope you had a good time. Uh, look forward to seeing you at a future Arts and Sciences event. Be safe going home.